bring you to the basement shop. Uh, kind of redo this other box. Uh, if you've seen my other pictures and videos of the Candy 520 box, it came out so nice that I'm going to redo this one. I've had this box for probably 20 years and I picked it up from a estate sale. So I figured uh, I refilted it probably 10 years ago. So I'm going to basically just do a quick sand, you know, clean, tape off everything and just spray the surfaces that you can see. Clean the, the guides are pretty stiff. I'm going to clean all that and lube all the guides, but this guy just be a makeup. But the box is in good shape, no rust, no major dents I see, so... It's just going to basically be a paint job. Just going to paint the fronts of the drawers. I'll paint the inside of the box. And um, that's about it. Might do some new felt and some spots. I got some extras left over. But other than that, um, twist the box around. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the back of it, except for the top. But this back is as good as you can get. It looks brand new. Besides, I have a little beat up. But like I say, I'm just going to repaint the whole thing. I ain't going to take the hardware off. I'm not drilling out rivets and replacing that. I'm just going to clean it up and uh, tape it off. Paint the unit. Then I take the tape off and I clear over the hardware. Because so it's starting to rust a little bit. So the clear seals that in. It's just a light coat around the hardware. So that's where we're at. So we'll stop by taking the drawers out. See what shape everything's in. Uh, if you have never taken out drawers before in the guides, there's every there's a bunch of different designs, but every but everything's the same basically. There's a little metal tab that you pull out and you push the guide back and releases from the tab. I'll show you a close up. Uh, last box I did had the full, just um, like you know, steel guides. And they were like regular bare steel. These uh, have all cuts and indentations pulled out. But that's the notch you're releasing the clip from. And once I get a couple drawers out, I'll, I'll pull the um. guide for you so you can see that. I know most likely all the draws are the same. You know the small one will go where the small one is but I always label them just in case they go back in the same place. So if there is a slight difference how they wore settled and there's a bend to it the lines stay the same. So that's right either on the back of the draw or on the bottom whatever you're more comfortable with I do on the back on the bottom. So this is left top. Left top, just mark it. And you just take all the drawers out, you just mark the drawer. And of course, you don't have to mark this one because there's only one of them. So, if you can't figure out where this one goes, you shouldn't be taking it apart. I didn't film the first one I did because literally I was just going to refelt it. I wasn't even planning on doing a full paint job to it, but it was such bad shape that I couldn't let it just sit there and be rusty with new felt. So, don't forget to mark the draw. So that's why I didn't really film anything on that one. And once I start sanding, I didn't want to get the camera dirty. So this one I'm gonna try of a cheaper phone, cheaper camera that I bought. And I was gonna start filming with that one, but of course the battery is low because it's cheaper, so the battery doesn't last. So I have that one on the charger as we speak. And hopefully time I get to the dirty pot, I can switch cameras. It'll do a little more recording. It's always fun when you're taking the bottom drawer out. Sometimes you find some good surprises inside, but this 
this one I've cleaned out when I first got it. So I, I've owned it long enough. There's nothing in there, but usually just paperwork in there that you weren't expecting to find. So. Draw that out here. Okay. So these are the little clips you release here. So you just pry it out. And it releases and they're back to the same. Pretty sure that they can go in either way. You just on the inside, the one that goes in first, you have it facing out so you can release it. If you put it in the other way, you couldn't release it, so it's common sense. But I just take them all out, they're all the same, as far as I know. And uh, what I do once you get them all out, you just clean clean where they slide in the drawers in the cabinet, and that usually makes it a lot easier. It's usually just dirt build up. Uh, some people put like a heavy grease on there. I don't believe in that. I put a just a light coat of oil, some lubrication that doesn't dry out. And it's all gonna attract dust and dirt, but that's what I do like. Some people do the dry lube sprays. Dry silicone, I don't like using silicone when you're gonna be painting anything because silicone does cause fish eyes, so never spray silicone when you're getting ready to paint. But after everything's nice and dry, you can try that. Any light lubrication is good. Now once you get the hang of where to pry, in, especially the inside ones, it's pretty dark. So you can't see what you're doing, and if I move the light out, I'll wash off the camera. So uh, once you get the hang of it, they come out quickly. It's all stripped down. I used this in other videos, but Ryobi, it's called an inflator. Inflate like rubber rafts or swim pools, stuff like that. But I use it as a blowgun. So I turn on the compressor, have the compressor run. Little jobs like this, it works wonders. <laughs> style plastic bristle brush and you brush your dry guides there get all the dirt do all that before you paint find a brush here
bristle brush. You can't find one, but got the little stainless steel ones that are used for aluminum, aluminum welding. These are pretty soft. Thing that's bent, damaged. in the other box that seemed a lot better but we'll see how these are if they're all clean I don't know if I did it maybe I did years ago or it was like that when I got it this one has like a heavier slight not grease grease but a slight it has to be grease it's not oil but it could just be oil that's got a lot of dust mixed into it some build up here. So, I, have to, I don't want to spray it with cleaner. I don't feel like spreading oil and grease around before I paint. So, let's see if we can clean it up good enough. working in the basement shop. It's, it's good heat down here. Basically the same heat as the whole house. So of the house is the shop is my upstairs room. The heat it doesn't go all the way up there. So you either have to run electric heat, which is a pretty big open area for electric heat. Or I freeze. And since it's below freezing outside it's cold up there, so I'm happy to be down here working. I don't do any painting, anything up there. No dirty work except for chips. Controlling the lube and the chips is hot enough to control up there. So that's good enough for now. brush would be perfect. Just get any dirt and debris outside the, or the slide, you know, guide slides. And it felt in good shape, just dirty. So I did a pretty good job years ago. And I say I'm not gonna touch the inside of this box stall. The paint I use it's not gonna match perfectly. It doesn't come close to matching, but I don't care. You don't see when the drawers are closed and when the drawers are open, you're working, so it doesn't matter. I'm just doing this to make it look pretty. And I'm not even gonna take off the hardware, I'm just gonna tape over it. And easy I've done it in the past just spray over it and before you know after you're done spraying it tacks up you just take a little cloth acetone you just wipe away the paint off the front of the knob so I could go either way I usually do that then you clear over everything and everything's good as new so that's where we're at
gonna start with sand the drawers and see if we can move the camera away. I don't want to get dust on the lens. I know my other phone isn't charged up yet. I'm just doing 220 sandpaper. Secret to sandpaper to buy good quality stuff. The cheapest stuff's not worth it. Let's see, yeah, that's far enough away.
basically same with this one. Pretty light paint. <laughs> is like dry and don't know that's kind of, I mean this box is old I don't know what year it is but I can say I'm I'm guessing it's you know 30 to 50 years old at least it was old when I got it and I've kept it inside a nice climate controlled room for you know 15 years it was old when I picked it up and I think the paint is just dried out on this box at all. I'll bring you back when I get to the box itself. Sand draws is pretty boring. You've seen enough? Okay, the draws all sanded. I'm going to just say I already wiped down the inside of the box with cleaner. I'm just going to scuff this. This is the the smooth paint doesn't have the textured finish on the inside, so I'm just going to scuff that down. Get ready. I'm using a little light, I think it's 100 grit sand sponge. Just to scuff up the inside. Good. That's where the paint always peels. You have to do a paint job with the hinge moving. And I try to move the top quite a bit after I spray it so the paint doesn't dry in between the hinges. sand prime down to bare metal but the front sides and back I'm just gonna try to see if I can get away with just scuffing them I'm gonna 
probably take a fine wire wheel to the hardware to buff those out. Get those looking good. I don't think this thing has to be taken down in bare metal everywhere like I had the other one. I had to go all the way down because it's rusty. This one is just dry paint, but it seems like this isn't coming off as the draw paint, just like the pill off with your thumbnail. And the lock comes off easy enough, so I'll take the lock off. We're going to tape up the inside of the hole so you don't blast paint over the felt. Try to sand real good around the edges of the hardware. You're cheating and not taking it off. You tape it up. You want to tape it up good and you want good adhesion. Now let's see if I can buff out the hardware with just the sand sponge it looks like it's got to buff out nice yeah so I probably won't even need the wire wheel on this one the other one I need the wire wheel because it was rusted I'm not going for a show piece here I don't want it to look as good as the other box they'll be in the same room I mentioned in one of my other videos when NASCAR was on, so the Daytona 500 is almost ready to go. I guess our president's going to be right around in circles before the race. We'll see how that goes. But, you know, I. I'm up in Massachusetts, Northern I've been into NASCAR racing since the 80s. So, I'm a Northern Redneck. I like it for some reason. I like all racing. Drag racing is my favorite because of the technology involved. I'm trying to make a car go that fast in a short amount of distance is pretty amazing. Yeah, I watch a lot of Australian racing on TV when it's on for all you Australian people out there. I like you. You got former NASCAR out there. Different Commodores and... Sorry, can't think of them off the top of my head right now, but I like watching that. I like you burnout skid contests. Formula One's okay to watch, but it is pretty boring, but technology-wise, it's amazing how they have those cars go. And what else is out there? Not really into monster trucks anymore, but it's fun to watch quick clips. And I like the Island of Man bike races. That's pretty amazing. Those guys are insane. So, you know, big Clive out there on YouTube. He lives over there. So that must be pretty amazing to watch that and live in person. And uh, the rally cars. Those are fun to watch, but they're not on TV that much. I think there is paid subscriptions out there, but. I don't really pay for anything that I don't really get into. And that, I'm trying to watch the XFL New League, but so far I can't really get into it. But we'll see what it does. It's always something's always on the background of the TV, so 
And if it's good about racing, you can just have it on and if you see a crash or hear them talking about a crash, you can check it out. So, this is what we're looking at for the next 10 minutes, so I'll pause it. I'll bring it back as I'm prepping the surface for paint.